Okay, so let's use Adobe Illustrator to create a wireframe for the website that we are going to build. Now, a wireframe is just a basic document that is in black and white that shows the structure of the website. This is something that you should create to, to quickly show where things are gonna sit, what we're gonna see on the home page, and how everything is going to work essentially. And don't let any of the pretty come into it. So don't add colors or font styles or pictures, etc. It's supposed to be really basic so that we can just focus on the organization and the function of the site. So in Illustrator, I'm gonna go to File New and I'm gonna go to Web because that's gonna give us some common sizes and it's gonna use it for pixels. So we can do common 1366 by 768. We can do web large 1920 by 1080. So I'm gonna probably just do common right now because I'm not gonna worry about a huge background image. And my website is gonna be 960 wide, and so this should be plenty. So I'll go ahead and click on common and choose create. All right, so we're actually gonna build this layout together in Dreamweaver. So we're gonna create this layout um, in a specific way but just so you know, when you're creating your own wireframe, you can kind of do anything. Just know that everything has to be in a box because everything, every code or structure tag is actually a box. Now we can round the corners of that box. We can make that box not have a background so we can't even see it. Um, but that's why we don't see a lot of websites that are actually circles. And even if you do see a website that's a circle, it's probably a box disguised as a circle. So um, I don't even have examples for you because uh, I don't know what it's doing. Okay. Because, um, yeah, it's that rare. So I think I've seen one once and then it went away. And I think it was actually made in um, Adobe Flash Professional, which we don't make websites out of anymore. Okay. So good Lord, I got a lot of I got a lot of panels happening here. So what we're going to do is we're just, we're just basically going to use these um, uh, shape tools. We might use some line tools and we probably are going to use a text tool or wherever the heck it, there it is. And why is this? There we go. I just want one column. Okay. So um, you can also, you have to know the difference between selection and direct selection. This selection tool is what we use to move things and it's going to grab the entire object and move it. This direct selection is going to um, be able to grab different specific parts of an object and select or move that specific part like an anchor. So it's going to like modify shape. So for this particular assignment, you're probably never going to need the direct selection tool, but you are always going to have to switch to this move tool or the selection tool so you can move things around. And so as you hover over it, you can see a V and that means that you can hit the V key on your keyboard and it's automatically going to switch that tool. So up here we have a filler color for a shape and the outline color for a shape. We just want it to be black and white, so that's absolutely fine. So I'm gonna start with a rectangle because my site is gonna be a rectangle. All sites are a rectangle. So I'm gonna click once instead of dragging. And when I do that, it pops up this window and it asks you how big do you want this rectangle to be? Well, I definitely want it to be 960 pixels wide so that I'm working with the size that I intend to make it. Um, so I can do 100 and stretch it out. Uh, well, we'll just do that. So once I have this rectangle, I can move it to the middle and you can see these little intersect lines. And if you can't see those intersect lines, you probably have to go to view and somewhere in here. Yeah, you wanna choose these uh, smart guides. Um, okay, so I'm gonna stretch this down by grabbing that middle handle and that shows me kind of the frame of my site. Now over here is where I'd have the body and maybe if this is a tourism site, I'll add a picture behind there or a pattern or whatever the case may be. So I'm gonna do a really generic version of, version of a logo. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And grab just a regular ellipse tool and I don't actually have the client's logo right now, so I'm just gonna pop it in there and then grab the text and just click once and type in logo. And I'm gonna switch back to the selection tool and grab the corner and you don't want it to stretch or skew. So as you're clicking and dragging, hold the shift key and that's gonna make sure that it m maintains its proportions. So there's where I'm gonna have the logo. So in real life, I'll actually have the real logo and I'll actually have the text for the site, but this shows them their logo is gonna go here. 
And that's pretty chunky for me, so I'm going to probably change that to, uh, well, we shouldn't care about font, but it's just really um, dark, so I might change that to a softer gray. There we go. So now we can decide how are we going to have our navigation. Now we can do one of two things, or three things actually. We can do a navigation bar and then put some text inside. We can do navigation buttons and that's where we just create one shape and then drag it along five times. Or we can just do like regular text that just says link, 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 link. So this is where we'd see home, products, about, contact, etc. Um, so those are three different styles that you are absolutely welcome to make. I'm going to do the button because it's a little bit more complicated because if you just wanted a bar, you can just draw a rectangle. And if you didn't want to have a button or a bar, then it's just the basic text. So I'm going to create my first button and I'm fine with it being gray for right now. Now, if I wanted it to be, if, if I really was going to make it look like a lighter color um, on the site, like if I had a dark background and I needed a light button, then I should pick a lighter gray or I can still keep it black and white. And notice that it doesn't have an outline in this particular instance. And that's because I don't really like having outlines, but okay. So sh shades of gray, gray are fine for wireframes. Now I want to make this because I want five, so I want to make sure that they fit. And then I don't want to keep creating this, so I'm going to click the text and type link. Now I'm not actually putting home and contact and products and about us because that's just a kind of a, a waste because we don't actually know what pages they're going to have yet, the client's going to have. So if we just do this, they can get the idea that this is navigation. So I try to maintain proportions that I would actually use in the site. So I, I don't want massive text and I'm going to shift. Well, let's see, I'm going to click on the text, hold shift, and then click on the um, box in the background. And that actually selects both of those. Now you could drag these and copy and paste them, but I'm actually going to create a group. So I'll do control G or command G and that makes that a group. So now when I click and drag it, it should take the text automatically with it. So by doing that, now what I can do is I can click on that box, hold the alt or the option key on the keyboard and notice when I do, my mouse changes to like a double arrow. And that's because now when you click and drag this, it's gonna create a copy of it. Now I don't wanna create a copy that's sort of slightly shifted. So as I'm dragging, I'm not letting go of the mouse, I'm actually gonna hold both alt and op or alt or option if you're on a uh, PC, it's alt. If you're on a Mac, it's option. And I'm going to hold shift as well. And shift is going to make sure that it stays in line. Now watch this. I can let go. Now don't do anything else. If you do something else, this isn't going to work. Now, if you want to keep just alt dragging all these, that's fine. But if you do command D or control D, uh, D as in dog, then it's going to create a copy of, a, or it's going to repeat your last step. So I'll do command D and you can see that it's going to create all of those links. So now I can shift click on all of those, put them in. And as you can see, they are, ah, that's going to be annoying. So I'm going to hold shift while I hold them just so that I can get them to sit right. And I don't want to make it too small that the, the text is too small, but there we go. Okay. So then I can come in here and I want to put a rectangle for my slideshow. And I'm going to make that maybe, no, we'll just do that. And I don't want to put an actual picture in there. Um, I think I want to do an outline though. Mm, maybe I don't. I don't at like outlines in, in, in case you can't tell. So I'm going to try to nudge that over with just my arrow key sort of get it to fit as much as it can. And sometimes when you zoom in really close, it's, it's going to allow you to fine tune this. So I'm going to go right out to the edge, but I don't want it to really cut off this outline. Otherwise it looks weird. So I'm going to hit command zero or control zero. Anytime that I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to say command zero, but if you're on a PC, every time I say command hit control. Okay. So this is where I'm going to have my slideshow. I don't want to put an actual image in here so I can put the word slideshow or I can do something really generic, like take my pen tool, make sure it's kind of a darker color, no fill. 
and I can come in here and create a generic, you know, click, 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 and there we go. Now to stop it, I can hit alt and then click. So that's basically just going to create, you know, sort of an image. So I can come in here and do maybe a sun that's happening right here. Hold shift to make sure it maintains its proportions. And there we go. So now I've decided now I do want a border. So can't make up my mind. There we go. So now I want to add some text in here. Um, just, just say welcome to the site. So this is what would represent where the H1 would go. And maybe they wouldn't actually say welcome to the site. But again, I want to maintain the proportions. I like the heading one to be really big. And then I'm going to put some text in here. I can either click and drag to create lorem ipsum text and the new Adobe Acrobat will add it in there. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, or you can just do lines to indicate text. So I'll just do that. And you might want to, you know, do a little bit of letting and line spacing and I don't actually like it to be really um, dark. So I'm going to choose something a little bit softer. And then I'm going to click and alt drag over here and call this events. And this is probably going to be a heading two, so it shouldn't be as big, but it should still be noticeable as events. So this is where I'm going to click the text tool and click and drag a tiny little event that has a little bit of lorem ipsum. And I can select that text and I can actually grab the eyedropper tool and click here so that it looks like the same gray. So I'm going to do alt drag on this to just drag out three different events. And then I'm going to grab my line tool and make sure that the stroke is on. And I'll do something a little bit darker. And I want to create a line between the events and the main. Now the main content might actually go a lot longer on this site, but for right now I'm going to actually put the C for the copyright. And there's actually a keyboard shortcut to do a copyright, but I can't remember it right now and we're running out of time on this video. So we're going to say copyright and put a little circle around it. And so we're going to have to say none. Oh, dang. It's changing the C. Okay. Click off of that, then click the circle, then choose no fill, but choose an outline and wrap it around that C so it sort of looks like copyright. And then I'm going to use the arrow keys to kind of center it the way I need to. All right, so there's my basic wireframe, and this is basically showing here. Here's what the structure of your site, the layout, how it's going to look, what is on the page. Um, and this shows a client that you heard what they said they wanted to see on their homepage and whether if they said they wanted something unique and this is pretty basic, then this is going to show them there's a problem. But if they said, I just want something quick and fast, it doesn't have to be fancy, then this shows them that you heard what they said. So the next step is to create a mock-up where, where we actually design the site so they can see the colors, the pictures, and we're basically creating um, kind of a photo-ready image of the front page of the site so that they can decide whether or not they like it before you have to code it, which takes a lot of time and effort. And you don't want to code it without it um, being the right design. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem and you're going to have to do it all over again. Okay, so next step, creating the mock-up.